Baby. Robin means business. Hashtag Race Home is presented by Audi, Vorsprung, Dirk Technik, Fanatec, Realistic Simulation Hardware, Sony PlayStation, this is for the players, Speedpool, Premium Content for Premium Customers, Uptrend, the Lifestyle Magazine from Abt Sportsline. Welcome to the super final of Race Home. It's hardly to imagine this championship is already coming to an end. We had seen so many cool racing, so many cool guest drivers, so many cool designs, and we had cool racetracks. And we saved one for this super final. Tom, which track is it? In short, we go west, we go uh, to the west coast of the United States, uh, we go to Monterey Bay. Uh, to a circuit just behind the Carmel Valley, Laguna Seca. Um, lovely circuit, very picturesque, beautiful up and down. And it has this legendary corkscrew, which drivers only see in approach. And then they turn down to the left, completely uh, not visible. Um, and that's very challenging on the, on the track itself. There's normally always a little bit of sand and a little bit of fog in the morning when they arrive to the circuit. But in short, that's what you want. The circuit is Laguna Seca, Thomas. How about overtaking on this race track, Tom? Because we have some more drivers today. We invited all the guest drivers from the first nine races to join us tonight. And a lot of them have followed on invitation. So we have a big, big grid on Q1, Q2 and Q3. So Nico Miller, for example, will start last in his qualifying race. Will it be easy for him or difficult? Uh, challenging. Uh, obviously, uh, with a lot of the uh, starters, it's it's very challenging. And on this circuit, there's not a lot of slip straining. It's, uh, it's, uh, the straights are pretty short and you kind of dive into the corners to take the space away. but that's it. Anyway, it's kind of, 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 of slower, but that is the way to overtake it, sort of to dive in to get your position. And uh, that's always criti critical. And uh, particularly at Laguna Seca, where you have even a little bit of sand, dust, uh, which is put onto the track. Of course, in simulating and how we do it here uh, in the virtual race, uh, we have chosen that it will be on the uh, super soft tires, all competition for the super final will be run on. You talked about diving into the corners, which is not so easy, which is Audi Vision Gran Turismo, which tends a little bit to understeer. And this car anyway has provided us with very, very good racing over the last nine races. And let's have a little look. What about how this car was developed and what was the reason for it?
So that's the Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo. Maybe you have seen it in real at some exhibition or at Formula E races where it's been a race taxi. We of course are racing it on the PlayStation and you as a fan can win very, very special PlayStations. Hashtag race home has almost come to an end for our Audi DTM drivers on the PlayStation. But we've got exciting news for you. Sony has provided us three of the famous 500 million limited edition PlayStation 4 Pros. The six Audi DTM drivers have signed them and now we auction them off for a good cause. Go to the eBay page of Mike Rockefeller, one of the Race Home founders, and you will have the chance to make a bid for this very, very special limited edition PlayStations. And before we are heading into Q1, here are the latest news from Race Home. We have a slightly different race format this time for the Super Final at Laguna Seca. Our CCO has invited all guest drivers from the whole season, which brings us back popular entries. Red Bull Ring Dominator, Mikhail Brautigam, Mayumi Shireishi from Japan, or DTM rookie, Fabio Shira. The race format has been slightly adjusted, with more cars on the grid in Q1, Q2, and Q3. Audi partner Mascot has produced special hashtag race home t-shirts for the DTM drivers. Just three points are separating Robin Frines and Mike Rockefeller before the final round, who will be the runner-up. There is also an intense fight for the glory of the best RCCO driver between the wind shadow man, Mikhail Nemas, the only permanent female driver on the grid, fast Betty Schuller, and Phoenix Racing's privateer entry, Stefan Bashau. Last but not least, René Rast will stay electric as he will race for Audi in Formula E. So here we are then in California, Laguna Seca for the final round of the RCCO hashtag race home. What a period of time we've had with our official DTM Audi drivers and a whole plethora of fantastic guest drivers as well. Each and every one of them having played their part in delivering great racing and great entertainment for us race fans. <laughs> Q1 is underway. Everyone gets away except <clears throat> Roland Zumsander. Starting back. What a shame. Sorry. Oh. So, and Nico Muller is in the pit lane. So, avoiding action from the champion. Hey. Lovely. Nico Muller, was Whoa. that you in the pit lane? Yeah, someone <laughs> crossed the road and I. <laughs> avoiding, I went through the pit lane. That was very good avoiding action, Nico. It's, um, it's a shorter, shorter road. Beautiful. That's why I went slow and let everybody go. <laughs> yeah, of course. You are very I, just, kind I couldn't man. move from the starting grid, so be careful. I'm on the starting grid, so. So, opening lap, Stefan Vashau is leading. Here's Alexis Chambon, P4. And Nico Muller doing the chasing. Poland, did you have the, the bug? Yep. Uh, starting bug. Please leave the track. Roland Zumzander out of the race. What a shame. Copy. And uh, instructions there from Frank Bieler, our race director. And here is Nico Muller, of course, was crowned champion at our last event, along with his team, Abt Sportsline. And Nico Muller currently running in P5. Oh, Alexis is coming. <laughs> Alexis is coming. Uh, here is Mikkel Nemas then, which is the car we can see ahead of us running in P3. Alexis to the inside here. This could be a perfect overtake. Well executed, Alexis Chambon. Beautiful pass there. Absolutely beautiful. Chambon. Absolutely nailed that perfectly, but Mikhail Nemas will try and come back. And there is Mikhail Nemas, the wind shadow man, who's now down to P4 because Alexis Chambon, with that brilliant overtake, has put himself up into a. Uh, Theoretical podium place in this uh, Q1. Stefan Vashau really under pressure now from Stefan Volta in that <laughs> extraordinary livery. Three, four oh, abreast. Three guys, I was kicked. Through the corkscrew they go. <laughs> what an extraordinary track this is and what great racing we're seeing. 
Oh, nine. Stefan Volta then leaning with the car. <laughs> Trying to hold on to that P2 place from the huge attack from Alexis Chambon and the huge gamut of cars right behind. This is definitely not my trick, I tell you. <laughs> so not true, necessarily. Stefan Vashau then in that uh, Phoenix Racing liveried car. Whoa! That was more than a little love tap. Uh, Nico Muller. Uh, there is Stefan Vashau then doing a great job in that P1 position. Looks like it's Stefan Watchdog's track. Can you comment on that, <laughs> Stefan? That's a fair point, Tom Christensen. Uh, today it's raining a little bit. Ah, now we know. And I hope I can win this, this race. Oh no, oh no, oh, no, no. It's coming. It's coming. Some extraordinary. Stefan Walter, then Finu is coming, and there we have a launch. Beautiful launch by. Oh, well we held, like Nico. Hey. Held on to that beautifully. A lovely little beautiful slide. It was a good overtake. So I was fully kicked. Not comments. by me, yeah? Nope. By, uh, no, no, no. It was another red car, but it was difficult to see. So if it was the case, try to change positions. Yeah. Look like Mikael Nemas on the receiving end. Nice launch, Nico. Mm. Hope you do enjoy that. Yeah, it was good. Michael was being nice and fair. No last minute change of direction. Ah, spoken okay. like the true champion that he is, Nico Muller, then P3. All right, get on with it. Last lap. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Nico. Get on with it. Last lap. No, no. You can do this. No, Nico. Not you. <laughs> So Vashan now uh, down to that P2 position. So wanted to win this. Yellow flag. Whoa. Ah. Yellow flag. I wonder if that's for Mikhail Nemas, who I think I saw heading towards the uh, barriers at one point. All, all good, Stefan Walter. All good. However, still on the timing screen as P5, so perhaps I'm wrong there. In the meantime, Delfino leading. Muller is pushing, though. Oh, no, no. As a Frankie so till now there was no position change. I don't mind to be honest because it's just ah. one five. <laughs> ah. Whoa, it's yellow, eh? oh. Oh. Was, sorry, was it okay, Nico? Yeah, yeah, it was fine. No worries. Good job, man. Thanks. Uh, uh, nice uh, one. Uh, what a uh, race, yeah. Kevin. Congrats. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, but I think uh, a bit if Nico break the. Like a millisecond earlier, he would have made it. <laughs> Good job, it really man. surprised me there. Big smile from our winner. That was a bit too late. Uh, anyway. uh, Michael, do you know who was pushing you off there? Yeah, it was Alexis. Hey, oh. Okay. So then I, it's a yellow. I Nico through, and then he completely uh, yeah, yeah. hit me off the track. I think it yeah. was Nico again, huh? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, Sorry to disturb. We have Stefan Walter. What a nice victory for you, Stefan. And you were pretty surprised. I mean, you you passed uh, Stefan Varsho on the penultimate lap, took the lead on the last lap, and then into the final corner, you were passed by Nico Müller for a few seconds when you repassed him and took the checkered flag. Well done. That must be a nice feeling at Laguna Seca. Yeah, thanks a lot, Earl. I, I'm super happy. And I mean, it's a great honor also to be interviewed by you. So I was thinking of that already in the last quarter. And I got nervous when I saw Nico. <laughs> and uh, so luckily, he braked a little bit too late. Otherwise, it would have been a very good move. So uh, but for now, I'm super, super happy and also very proud. Oh, thank you, and I'm very privileged. I just see the helmet you raised today, so you are definitely my favorite driver. I hope you will win today. <laughs> good luck. Uh, Thanks good a lot. luck for your progress. I think you remember that he was racing with your livery on the car with Tom K, Mr. Le Mans, in one of the last races. So he should be really be cheered by you. But let's have a little <laughs> look back to all this fantastic racing which we have seen this year. It's Spa Francochamp, and it is the fantastic hashtag Race Home, the very first event. And that hands it to Alexis Chambon. 
5.793 kilometers of tarmac awaits with four left-hand turns and seven right-handers. Duval P3. But you wouldn't bet anything on that staying that way for the next 100 meters of tarmac. Oh, very nearly a photo finish by a five one hundredths of a second. The circuit to Catalonia, Barcelona is the scene for the next round of hashtag race home. 4.6 kilometers, 16 turns, six left, and 10 of them are right-handers. Oh, what the f man. Uh, that was not me. Four-way fight for P1. Four. Oh, oh. hey, oh, come yeah. on. Who, who pushed me off? That was me. This one was me. Who pushed me? Dries Vantor, I think, has done enough to be victorious in Barcelona. Hashtag race home, and we're coming from the Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache into Lagos. And... Oh, Ooh. I was pushed. Hello, hello, hello. Mike? Yes, it was all me. I, thought, I said five <laughs> times. I mean, couldn't hear you. Oh. Oh, okay. Man. Hey! Oh! Hey, hey, hey! What hey. the heck? It's going to be another photo finish. Nico Muller is victorious! Hashtag race home, it's the Q1 race here at Mount Panorama, the Bathurst circuit, 6.2. Very demanding kilometers. Oh. <laughs> Nico Muller now leads Christopher Haasa. Will it be these two in the grand final? Only time will tell. Oh shit, shit. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. And across the timing line, Nico Muller wins! Welcome to a race home special on the Nordschleife at the Nürburgring. Q1, Q2 and Q3 combined into one race with the top three going through to the semi-final. These guys are having so much fun and Mike Rockefeller is really having to defend. I'm joking. I'm joking. 375. I'm inside. I'm inside. Oh. What he needs is a mistake from Nico, but Nico Muller tends not to make too many mistakes. Yes, he has. Well done, Nico. So the GP circuit awaits our drivers then for this qualifying race here at Brands Hatch. You were always fast in and slow out, but this time you were slow in. Uh, <laughs> too, too slow. <laughs> I was surprised. Sorry. There was somebody else involved. Whoa! Oh! It was Gotti! Whoa! Oh! Gotti! That controller is tactic. You're waving. <laughs> no <laughs> way by. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> good race, guys. Oh, good. None is gonna be enough. Robin Frines wins! It's round eight of our race home series from a wet Red Bull ring. A good battle, longest straight with the kink in the middle as they head towards the Remus turn in the appalling weather conditions that have been chosen for this particular event. Mikhail Brattigam, who is very fast indeed. Uh, just a few tenths between P1 and P2. Nico is off the track. This could affect the result here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fuji Speedway for our hashtag race home penultimate event. So can the championship be won in this event? Come on, Nico. Hard on the brakes yeah, then as he goes into turn point. one. Come on. Hey, hey, push oh. me off! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Position change! Yes, yeah. was called. Yeah, sure not! Give him enough room! Yeah, exactly! Hey! 
Oh, 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 oh. Well, Nico Muller has been crowned the first ever hashtag race home champion. And uh, this, though, is the super final. That's going to be the closest finish. That's Thomas Tillemont. So many big highlights from what has been a fantastic season. Jamie Green prepares for this Q race. There is an actual jump stop, right? Yep. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Jamie goes from P5, Christian Reinley from P1. No, just, just go when you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Forever the Joker, Mr. Green. So away we go for our Q2 race, and Dave Gaming is going to be one to keep an eye on here. This Ooh. is somebody hit, hit Jamie from a yellow, really hard. Hit from not, a yellow car. No, no, that's not true. <laughs> Who was it? Uh, the one with the Batman on the car, right? The one with the Batman. Batman and Robin. Exactly, it was Robin. <laughs> Robin. Hold on there, Jamie. Come on. So Jamie oh, Green Nico. hard at work, um, having received a fair shove, but uh, continues unabated. So uh, Christian leads the way at the moment, and uh, Jamie Green in P2. <laughs> Fabio Scherer then making his DTM debut, of course, this year. He's running in P3, then it's Mike Rockefeller, P4, ahead of Matthias Franzen, who's uh, P5, then Signum Driver and Dave Gamey. Whoa, it's through the corkscrew. Somebody gets very sideways. That's not the case for Fabio Shira. Just have a feeling here that Mike Rockefeller's gonna come under some real pressure in a moment. Because Fabio Shira is right on his gearbox. Metaphorically. Ooh! Mike Rockefeller is very aware of the fact that he's uh, awaiting the attack. That was an eventful first lap, Mr. Rockefeller. What, uh, do you have any comments? Understatement of the year there from uh, Tom Christensen. And there we can see in the replays just everything that was going on. And my goodness me, there was so much going on. Brilliant replays. And you can see the rear view mirror right at the top of the screen as well as Jamie Green elevated into that uh, P2 position. Great onboard shots that bring each and every part of the action from this uh, race home series to you and to me as cars went absolutely everywhere and hold on to your hats Fabio Scherer is P2 now with Mike Rockefeller P1 how on earth did that happen well uh, basically it's because and there is Dave Gaming in uh, P4 now Christian Reinley in replay as you can see here had an excursion lost quite a bit of time clunked into by Batman at the same time and there we can see it from another camera angle it was a massive save, but cost him a great deal of positions. So that was the position from the replay, and that's why Mike Rockefeller is now leading, but being chased by Fabio, who is in that P2 place at the moment. There's a couple of seconds <coughs> between P1 and P2. Look at that concentration on the face of Mike Rockefeller. Of course, one of the creators of this brilliant Race Home uh, series, along with uh, Thomas Vogt. Therefore, he wants to go out on a high at our last event here at Laguna Seca. Signum driver then, P6. But Rocky leading from Fabio Scherer. The danger man here could be this man, Thomas Poizo. Signum driver. Another one of our um, design contest guest drivers back as Fabio Scherer takes plenty of curb in his quest to get on terms with Mike Rockefeller. Gap is down to 1.2 seconds between P1 and P2, but we're running out of laps because we are on lap three of four here. So what can Fabio do? Also got to be very minded that Dave Gaming is in that P3 place and Jamie Green in P4. This ain't all over yet. Oops, sorry, Dave. As we start the last lap, a little bit of... Um, Nerf between Dave Gaming and Jamie Green, I feel, as we hear there on Team Radio. Jamie Green to P3 now. 
Uh, Dave Gaming relegated to uh, P4 and Signum Driver has dropped away into P5, but he's trying to wrestle away that P4 place. Fabio Shearer for the moment is content in P2. There's Thomas Poizo in that uh, extraordinary livery. So the battle for P4, 5 and 6 continues to rage whilst Mike Rockefeller leads from Fabio Shearer and Jamie Green. Those are the podium places at the moment. Never say anything is confirmed until the final centimetre of tarmac has been taken. So there, Jamie Green. Oh, an interesting line through the um, uh, corkscrew. Very interesting. Maybe a bit too much speed carried into it as Mike Rockefeller takes the win. It's going to be Fabio Scherer that takes uh, P2. And Christian Rainley will take P3. GG, Rocky. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You were concentrating, Rocky. So the checkered flag continues to fall on the, the rest of the drivers. Nice, Rocky. Including Jamie Green here. Nice race. Well done, you. Mike. Well, yeah, I didn't do too much. Everybody went off in front of me, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's not really too difficult. Mike Rockefeller, always uh, very humble, but victorious. Sorry for the, for the first break. So confirmation good, good. of the result then. Uh, that was into Jamie, right? Right. Yeah. The first call, Jamie... I mean. <laughs> Everybody hit you, Jamie. <laughs> Fabio hit you. <laughs> yeah, I hit Dave well done, Mike Rockefeller. Well. Congratulations. Slow. You were very silent uh, through the race, so obviously very concentrated. Uh, how did you enjoy Laguna Seca and now you uh, putting pressure on the second position on Robin Frimes today uh, and with your victory at Q2? <laughs> Um, yeah, well, it's the last round and, uh, you know, I, I love the track in, in real life. Um, I think it's a it's a really nice place to race. Uh, it's beautiful, uh, the area and uh, also, yeah, the track itself. It has been quite a long time, so it's nice to be back even though it's only virtually. But, uh, yeah, it was good and it's always good to win, that's for sure. If it's in real or virtual racing, it's always nice to be the winner. So like Jamie Green, Fabio Serra, they made from, they made a little bit easy for you. You were fourth on the first lap, and and then you suddenly uh, going over the crest at one, lap one. You were leading, and uh, when you're leading, you stayed there, and that's maybe what you intend to do the rest of the day. Well done, congratulations, and uh, good yeah. luck, Rocky. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, Rocky is still fighting for P2 in the championship, but. Nico Müller, of course, was also too fast this season for him. Let's hear what our DTM riders are thinking about the new champion. First of all, I mean, we all know that Nico is good behind the steering. So, uh, uh, and on top of that, I think he's been uh, he's been doing a lot of sim uh, during uh, during this period. Uh, you know, he has uh, he has two programs: one in Formula E and one in, in DTM. And uh, in, in Formula E, they, they had to do also, also races, so he did receive a seam and, and everything. So, I mean, like most of the guys, but I have to say that uh, on top of being good, he had a lot of training. Uh, I think he still has some, some free times because uh, he doesn't have kids yet. Um, so, yeah, all, the, all these things made, uh, made him uh, being able to, to perform better than us. But I have to say that he was really consistent at the top. So. This was uh, was impressive because normally you always have one or two weekends uh, or races where you struggle a little bit more, but uh, he's been consistent through, uh, through this period, so congrats to him. Well, Nico, I think, deserves the championship, obviously, because he was just the best of us. Uh, he was consistent, he was uh, always there, um, very quick, clean. I think it looked like he had it under control and uh, he showed a lot of talent, uh, definitely, in the sim. Um, so yeah, I think he just deserves it. He's a nice guy anyway. Um, I think a very smart uh, driver and uh, also in reality. So I think he's a good champion and uh, I congratulate him one more time. 
I think Nico is a worthy champion. I think he was always one of the quickest uh, in every track we have been to. Uh, we were battling quite a lot. Uh, at the beginning, I was a bit better in the sense of results-wise, and he was a bit unlucky, and then it pretty much changed. Um, he he had more luck on his side, let's say, but uh, he always had the pace, so I think he he won quite some races, so he's definitely uh, the worthy champion. Uh, I think he's a worthy champion because he's been the most consistent, and like in real racing, that's what it's all about, to win a championship is to constantly be close to the front and, and not make mistakes. Um, that's one thing I struggle with, with my very basic sim rig um, that I've stole from my kids, is that I don't have the feeling on braking and um, yeah, quite I often miss the braking point and end up in the gravel quite easily, which is uh, what I did at the last race in Fuji at turn one going for the lead. So yeah, uh, he's he's been not been making mistakes and uh, he's, he's always been on the pace. Well, obviously I've been consistent. I've managed to, to win several races and score points regularly. Uh, from the point I switched from the controller to the steering wheel, that definitely helped. Uh, the first uh, event with the controller, I, I don't think I scored any points, but after that I paid off to make the switch and uh, yeah, I got to grips with our Audi e-tron Vision GT quickly and uh, managed to bring it home. Hmm. Here comes Q3. Qualifying three. Last. Do me a favour, Rene. Find out where Robin is on the grid. Why are you last, Robin? I don't know. I'm always last. <laughs> <laughs> the first will be the last. You can still win from there, Robin. <laughs> the last will be the first. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Rene goes from P3 on the grid. Steve Gerber is P2. Andreas Zerch is in pole position. Oh, Lloyd. And like Duval, you didn't start the thing. Losers out at the start. <laughs> Man. So as we get this underway, then it is uh, Stimpy, Steve Gerber, who is uh, leading currently. Ah. Rene Rast is uh, P2, and uh, then oh. running in uh, P3 is the car of uh, Mikhail Brautigam, who's had a very, very good start indeed. Mikhail oh, on the screen you. there. Fighting with Rene Rast, who now occupies that P2 position. Mikhail Brautigam. Trying to wrestle that away from uh, Rene. In the meantime, thanks a lot. Andreas Search goes around. What was that? And Robin Frines. Andreas Search. Trying to make his way up the order as well. It's P4 for Robin. I was pushed out, yeah. And Andreas Search then confirming that he was uh, pushed out of the race. Whoa. By who? Still time to come back, though. Uh, I was on the inside. Here comes the discussion. Hey, I'm a lawyer, I'm a lawyer. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what? And uh, Rene. Who was that? A um, nerf there. I got massively pushed out, man. Massively. <laughs> Let's see it from a different angle here. Well, if, uh, couldn't see it, Rene. Breaking point missed. Yeah, but I went uh, till Timbuktu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, then we have to check it. Mm, what's that contact? It's not that far away, Rene. Well, nonetheless, that's put um, Rene much further down the order than he would have liked. Loic Duval up to third. Well done, Loic. Um, quiet and menacing, and Robin on the gravel. <laughs> <laughs> So the order then, and it's all played into the hands of uh, this man. Yeah, Steve yeah, Gerber yeah, in front, yeah, coming yeah. up to the top school. Steve Gerber doing a brilliant Gerber. job here, unfazed by yeah, anyone. Beautiful lines to the top school, a bit of oversteer. <laughs> that was almost a drift. Yeah, nee, man. Sorry. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Uh, but pretty good to watch. Uh, once again, apologies if there's any bad language coming from our uh, drivers as the chase is on and the challenge is on for the lead of the race here. Mikhail Brautigam then in that TWL 86. Driving the WRT car. <laughs> Running in P2 with a little bit of contact on the corner. Hey, come on. <laughs> but 
<laughs> Steadfast in that P1 position. Come on, help me out here. There's a Stimpy 8 who's not being moved at all. Brilliant driving. We have the top two cars on screen, so I don't know what's going on. Looks like uh, Robin Fine yeah, is not into a room somewhere. It's Robin on! Oh! Yeah, yeah. René Rastrum. Robin and René come to blows. René Rastrum. <laughs> René Rastrum, who's made a sufficient car size gap. Lovely fight at the front. <laughs> Big respect. Three point to come. And obviously the leader, Gabba. Oh. <laughs> So Rast and Frines are P6 and P5, and respectively. Laugh, laughter going on between Rast <laughs> and Frines. Uh, more crying, actually. But... Tom, they're in their own kind of uh, stock car race at the moment, aren't they? But uh, very enjoyable for us. Uh, meantime, here comes the challenge for the lead. And oh, Miguel Brautigam doing a brilliant job here, but he's not thus far been able to make anything stick. Valiant efforts though. So in that number one car, Steve Gerber is not for being moved currently. And whatever Brautigam throws at him. Oh no! Oh la la! Oi, 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 oi. Trying too hard. WRT car from Brautigam went off. Well, that could have changed the whole face of this. We are, though, on the last lap. In the fight with Gerber for the victory. P2 to P5, we go to Q4. The whole thing has been extraordinary. I just do not know where the four laps have gone because there has been so much going on. It was a very, very good save, though, from uh, Brautigam to uh, bring the car back around again, but uh, Steve Gerber has been resolute and completely untroubled when the pressure was put upon him. He just, well, he absorbed it all like something of a sponge. Well done, Steve Gerber. A very, very convincing victory. And well done to Mikhail Brautigam for taking P2 and very quietly, by his standards, Loic Duval P3 and... Rhines and Rast uh, doing their own sort of pirouette dancing. Uh, very yes, good score. Uh, <laughs> Rene deciding to reverse all the way around the track. Extraordinary. <laughs> Last day of school for these boys in this RCCO hashtag race home series. <laughs> Brilliant entertainment. And a rock solid win from Steve Gerber, who's with Tom Christensen now. Congratulations, Steve Gerber. Well controlled race in your Stimpy car. Uh, until the final lap, you were in a very good and strong fight with uh, Breutigam. And then it, you controlled it after there. It was and became an easy win. Was the fight with him very hard? Were you able to to drive very fast or were you or do did you have to protect your line in your fight with Breutigam? Yes, I hit very hard. I see in the middle. Uh, it was pretty close. And uh, yeah, he made the mistake and yes, I I don't I make the win. Well done, uh, Steve. Where are you sitting? You're sitting in Switzerland somewhere I can see in your nickel Nine. shirt. Yes. Uh, he's sitting in Thun. Uh, it's nearly uh, on Blumenstein, Nico Müller, and uh, I will thank Nico for driving his car. That's great. Thank, thank you. Yes. Mm. I love your dialect. That will be enough to make it into the super final, I imagine. Good luck. Good luck, Steve. Yes. Thanks, Tom. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Steve, who of course is a big fan of Nico Müller. And that's the way how he came into this Race Home Racing Series, driving the Auto Scout 24 car designed by Nico Müller himself. And of course, he was happy to see his yeah, favorite driver winning this championship. And we want to see how Nico clinched this title. It was a difficult start of the hashtag Race Home season for Nico Müller as he had to use a controller at the first race at Spa, where the DTM drivers struggled a lot. 
and went home with zero points. Nico Muller switched to a professional rig for round two at Monza, where he was fighting with the leaders, scoring his first points in fourth position. His championship campaign really started in Barcelona. Following this bold move on the last lap of the semi-final, he made it to the super-final for the first time, just losing out to Dries Van Tor at the Checkers. His first of three wins in a row came at Interlagos, where Jamie Green had no chance against Nico in the super-final. Well done. He Sorry, defeated mate. GT ah. star Christopher Haase <laughs> at Bathurst Woo! and overcame the challenge from green hell driver Patrick Jasinski at the famous Nordschleife. Such was his advantage that he could afford to miss round seven at Brands Hatch. He came back, still crossing the finish line first at a very wet Red Bull ring. A penalty for leaving the track of the last corner meant he eventually finished second. And Nico was in dominant form again at Fuji, where he clinched the title with one race to go, despite a controversial disqualification from the semi-final after contact with title rival, teammate and friend, Robin Freins. Man, I'm lost again! No, you're yeah. not! No, you're not! I lost my team. Nico should start last, actually. <laughs> To clear up any confusion, Robin Freins is actually going from P9. Alexis Chambon is pole. Top three, right? Fabio Shearer P2, and yes, Mikhail yes. Brautigam goes from P3. The last two will be the first. Uh, this is going to be one heck of a clash of the Titans across Laguna Seca's tarmac. The lights go green. Fabio Shearer concentrates like never before. And it's a packed grid into turn number one then. What a brilliant start from Fabio Shearer, but Alexis Chambon goes through to pick up P1. And now, Shearer is under real pressure from the champion, Nico Muller. This whole gaggle of cars. Around this extraordinary Laguna Seca circuit. Try and make the very best of it. Alexis Chambon then is trying to escape up the road. Fabio Shearer cannot really keep on terms with Alexis Chambon because he's having to defend from Nico Muller. So, Shearer makes the car as wide as possible as they go through the uh, corkscrew for the first time of asking. Apologies for the language as Fabio gets it wrong. Nico Muller just... Kept the pressure on, did absolutely nothing wrong. And therefore, uh, finds himself in that P2 position now. We're looking at the replays here. Brilliant on-board shot. Nico already at the front. Fuck, you know. <laughs> no, he's second. P2. And again, apologies for the language from Robin. Uh, he's P2, but struggling. He is struggling, to be fair. Yeah. And <laughs> Stefan Vashau is right on him here, so Nico is under threat from Stefan Vashau here. Here is a Batman Signum driver then, who's running in P5. Andreas Zerch is uh, behind, and Fabio Shearer is back in the race, but down there in P7. In the meantime, Alexis Chambon trying to escape up the road. Here is our P2 driver, Nico Muller. Down through the corkscrew, Stefan Vachau tries to get as close as he can, but he's not within uh, overtaking distance yet, I would have suggested. He needs to find a little bit more. Nico, full of concentration, of course, sealed the deal, became the champion, as we've seen the last round. So Muller there with a uh, penalty. Here is uh, Christian Reinle. And there is Fabio Shearer, who's making his way back up the order. Oh. Now finds himself in uh, P6, ahead of the uh, TWL car of uh, Mikhail Brautigam, who 
course, started uh, P3, but with everything going on right at the start of this race, we've not quite reached uh, half distance in this uh, qualifying four race. So Signum Driver with the um, extraordinary livery, the liveries that we've had across this whole RCCO race home series have been absolutely fantastic. A squabbling with Lloyd Duval over the uh, P4 and P5 places at the moment. Duval, for now, is relegated to P5 as that Signum Driver does go through. Stefan Vachau not able to keep on terms with uh, Nico Muller. Nico Muller, of course, trying to hunt down Alexis Chambon, but Chambon is just up the road, and Stefan Vachau trying to keep within striking distance of Muller, but he's not able to do so. So P1, P2, and P3 are spread out, really. You can just see uh, the uh, race-leading car disappear off that shot. Vachau could have Lloyd Duval for company before the end of this Q race, and there is Lloyd Duval. Currently running in P4 with his uh, traditional um, relaxed pose on the sofa. Nico really fast. Only thing that's missing. I'm learning from the master here. <laughs> is the cup of tea in the left hand. Waiting for me, please. Muller now is beginning to just really in Alexis Chambon a little bit. So the gap is under a second now. Has Nico been playing with us here? And he's deliberately going to use the second half of the race within which to make his move. And of course, he wants to go out of the uh, series, not only as champion, but on an absolute high by winning as much as he possibly can. He's got nothing to prove. He's won the championship and won it in fine style, but it's P2 for Nico certainly is not the position he wants. He wants P1. There's Stefan Vachau. These three are so far ahead of the P4, P5 and P6 cars at the moment. So we have uh, the remainder of this lap plus three still to go on board with Nico Muller, who's suffering from just a tad of understeer there as he crosses up his hands to try and control this extraordinary car. Absolutely brilliant cars and brilliant racing that we've seen through uh, the whole uh, race home competition. Our race leader, Alexis Chambon. The gap now is down to six tenths. The potential fight is on and it's coming. So with three laps remaining, Nico may have judged this absolutely perfectly with regards to when he is going to pounce. Is he going to be able to mount the pressure on Sean Bourne and elicit a mistake? Stefan Vachau, of course, will be there to pick up the pieces should the two uh, come to blows. <sighs> Steadfast in that P3 position. Lloyd Duval has been relegated to P5 now. So Nico breaks hard. Again, piles on the steering lock as he tries to get ever closer to Alexis Sean Bourne. In the meantime, Robin Freins goes for a um, pirouette move and manages to collect one or two others as well. That was a, uh, a scary moment, Robin. And this was the point where he clattered in. I think it might have been uh, Mikhail Nemas that he connected with. No, it was Andreas Zerch who was on the receiving end of uh, the recovering Robin Frines. Right, Nico, where are we at? Well, he's not done it yet, and Alexis seems to have uh, got second wind here. Two laps remaining. And uh, the race being led by Alexis Chambon, being chased hard by the champion, Nico Muller. Nico hasn't yet, though, been able to mount a serious overtake possibility against Alexis Chambon. Running that uh, beautiful livery. There is Nico. So as they cross the uh, timing line. Nico, where are you? <laughs> what's the gap between them? Six, Six tenths. Five, right? Just under seven tenths between the two of them. Now we're already after the race. And uh, Nico. 
Look to foul there. Who's running in uh, P5? Miguel Brautigam, who is uh, P4. You can see that, um, in my opinion, the Nico Muller car is suffering from some understeer. But uh, the gap is still seven tenths between P1 and P2. Ain't all over until the chequered flag flies, though, and through the corkscrew, holding onto the car beautifully as you run downhill here at Laguna Seca. Of actually walk to the top of the corkscrew. It's a tidy stomp up there, I can tell you. So Alexis Chambon then. Now the gap is down to five tenths as under braking. Nico Muller gets closer than he has done for quite some time. What can Nico pull out of the bag here in the final stages of this Q race? As we start the final lap, it's now or never for Nico Muller. And me thinks, and by goodness, I've been wrong so many times before. I think he's deliberately left it until the last lap for a real effort. But I might be wrong. So, here he comes then. Oh, just running a little bit wide. You can sense that Nico really is throwing absolutely everything at this now. Last lap, last lap. Should we have a change at the front? Remember, top six goes to semi-final. I thought it was top three. I thought it was top three going through. Top three, Tom. Ah. Top three. Ah, sorry. No, what you're talking to. So, confirmation from Thomas Vogt that the top three are going through to the semi-final. And that will be Alexis Chambon, Nico Muller, and Stefan Vachau, unless anything changes. But with only a couple of corners left to do, I believe enough has been done and Nico Muller has to settle for second place because Alexis Chambon wins. A great race. And Stefan Vachau in the semi-final too. As he confirms that P3 finish oh, position. No. <laughs> Gail Brautigam just missing out. He finishes in P4. Oh, Loic. Uh, Loic Duval finishes P6. Mikhail Nemas P7. And uh, Robin Freins uh, finishes in P8, may I mention. Well done. We will see the top three progress into the semi final. It's uh, Alexis Chambon, it's, uh, the champion, Nico Müller, and it's uh, Stefan Vasho. So well done to the three of them. Alexis, uh, victory now in Q4 must make you very, very happy. And it was a great pace you kept through the entire heat and withstanding the pressure from the new champion, Nico Müller. So um, a great progress from you and well done. Yeah, thank you, a great race and uh... Well done to Nico Miller, because uh, I can't leave him and uh, great face. Thank you. Yeah, you did well. You controlled it all the way. And uh, you both progressed to the semi-final and then you can let it all loose to challenge, to be into the super final as the two best will go. Good luck, Alexis. Great race. And before we go into the semi-final, we want to have a look on the closest finishes in this season. We have the top 10 for you. We've seen many exciting races and close finishes in Hashtag Race Home, which started 10 weeks ago at Spa. It was very wet at Red Bull Ring. GT star Christopher Haase was blindingly fast at Bathurst. Design contest winner Pim Sterrenberg just held off his fellow countryman Robin Freins at Monza, where we also saw an intense battle between teammates Nico Muller and Robin Freins. Dries Van Tor was the only race winner using a controller at Barcelona. It was a three-way fight to the flag in the semi-final at Interlagos. We saw the closest super-final finish at Fuji. And the tightest finish ever at Interlagos with Jamie Green just taking away victory from Robin Freins on the oh, finish man. line. Oh, Jamie won! <laughs> Check it out. Good race, guys. Congrats. Good job, Jamie. Cheers, boys.
Well done, man. Seven thousand. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, eh? <laughs>And here comes the semi-final. Steve Gerber from pole position. This man, Mike Rockefeller, goes from P2. Then it's Stefan Volta, Alexis Chambon, Nico Muller, and Stefan Vachau. That's the way the grid lines up for this four-lap dash for cash. Who will be the two that go through to the super final? Tension mounts. Anticipation builds, as does the excitement. And the cars are released. This is the most serious I've seen Mike looking during the whole race home series. Oh, Alexis Chambon! Hey, Dive hey, bomb! Hey, Mike Rockefeller held his reserve though and maintains that P2 position. Into P3, Stefan Volta running the uh, Lightning McQueen livery. You can see just how uh, Stefan really gets into this. Stefan, hold them up. Who's next? Keep them behind. <laughs> oh, no. I think he's doing a favour here for Mike Rockefeller, isn't he? As Mike Rockefeller uh, puts the chase on now to Steve Gerber, who's P1. Just respect for this Steve. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Oh, go. A real flurry through the corkscrew then. As you run so downhill. There's some contact around. Nico Miller was helped a bit off the track. Entry to the Cork School. Can he make it up? Well, Tom, if anyone can, Nico can. Steve Gerber. Uh, we run on board with. Just Sorry, for Nico. a moment. Sorry. And now. Stefan Volta, he's under real pressure from Alexis Chambon. There is Stefan then. That looks like some understeer, Stefan. Two turn one. Keep it up. You're my favorite. Yeah. Such mutual admiration between them. However, it was a good overtake from Alexis Chambon, who now finds himself in P3. So Mike Rockefeller then continuing to chase down Steve Gerber here. What's the gap between them? Well, it's negligible, truthfully. Steve Gerber with his wits about him, but we've already seen how Steve Gerber, it doesn't matter who's behind him, does not yield to the pressure, does not make errors. So Mike is really going to have to push hard here to make something happen. Rocky seems to have a little bit more pace than Steve Gerber. Uh -huh. How do you see it, Rocky? Well, let's hear from Mike now. Hey, you know how it is, to close the gap is one thing, but to overtake, well, of course, that is, is another thing. Are there? He made a small mistake. Oh, the see if the slipstream is good enough. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Can he do it? Lead on the brakes. Good defending there from Steve Gerber, to be fair, who didn't do anything wrong, just uh, held his position. And perhaps made the car a little wide. But as uh, Rocky has said, it's all very well. Getting onto the back of someone, but trying to get by them is a completely different thing. Will it be these two that we see in the super final, or will Alexis Chambon have something to say about that? Who's currently running in P3? It's a three way fight for the honors here now between Steve Gerber, Mike Rockefeller, and Alexis Chambon, the P1, 2, and 3 places. Uh, uh, no! Oh, sorry, 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 I tried. Oh, was actually good. <laughs> Rocky, that was awesome. So Mike Rockefeller now picks up the lead. Steve Gerber relegated to P2 and is under threat now from Alexis Chambon. As Gerber comes back into that P1 place. Mike Rockefeller P2 and then Chambon P3. Joe, once in the crevice, the crevice is gone. So Chambon then looking to the outside of Rocky, then dives to the inside. There's some contact between all three of them. Who will come out of this P1 and P2? This is what is critical. Because the top two only go through to the one lap shootout super final. And Mike Rockefeller really wants to be in that. He's P2 at the moment. So it's as we were. We are on the last lap. 
And here comes Nico Muller to join in the party as well in P4. Rocky. Nico. <laughs> So Muller goes through to P3, through the corkscrew. Just three oh, corners to do before the checkered flag. Muller up to P3, but Gerber and Rocky, surely they have done enough to make Night it bomb. their super final. Ah, shit. Sorry, Nico, bad language, tries. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but try is too hard. Hey, good race. Guys. Good race, guys. Good it was job. fun in the front. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> <good> fight. <laughs> so Gerber <laughs> takes a victory. And Mike Rockefeller <laughs> takes P2. Alexis Schombon P3. Nico Muller P4. Alexis really good as well. How far you were quick. Well, that was a great race to be fair. Was okay for you? You can respond in your own time. Yeah, okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, good race. Great race. And again, Steve Gerber, you won the semi final, making you and Rock Rockenfeller go head to head in the in the super final. It was a wonderful race. And I, I have to say that Rocky made the pass going uh, around the ice outside at the corkscrew and in those days where we now everyone are uh, thinking and put our prayers down to alex sanadi that very much reminded me on that pass i don't know have you seen that pass in indica which rocky actually did on you what he did on uh, i think it was brian herter many years ago have you seen that yourself steve yes i know and uh, thanks, Rocks, Rocky. That was a really fair race. Uh, no push. That's yes. Was was, was wonderful. That's great. And now focus towards the the final, where I also would like to have a look at the wonderful circuit of Laguna Seca. Yes, the honor belongs now to our pole sitter to describe one lap of Laguna Soca. So please take us around. I can oh, do, you can you do it in Switzerland, German. Yes, yes. Do it in Switzerland. Then, then Nico, Nico. I will come and. I, you're driving already, right? You're exiting yeah. pit lane now. Yes. Yeah. So here we go, after turn one, re rejoining the track. Uh, yeah, end of sector one here, a very tricky right-hander because it tightens up on the exit. Uh, then going into sector two here, a very quick right-hander. I need to get a good exit out of that one. And then under the bridge here, which kind of is your reference for the breaking point, into a slightly banked left-hander, medium speed. Also the exit uh, uh, is not really opening up, so not easy to get it wrong. And then a blind quick turn in for the for the left hand that leads up the hill towards the course group. Easy to run wide on exit. And that braking here is the most tricky one of the track. You don't really see where you're going. Need to slow the car down in time for yeah that big downhill drop here. Uh, easy to put the wheels onto the dirty part of the track before going to the last sector here. Bank left hander again. And then uh, second last corner. Yeah, downhill slightly before going to the last tight uh, left hand hairpin. Need to get a good exit for that long straight that leads up to the finish line. And that's the lap in Laguna Seca. Well done, Steve. And absolutely, everyone in Switzerland sounds just exactly like the champion Nico Müller. Well done, Steve. And good luck in the super final. Thanks for yes. the. Good luck, man. Keep gas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much to our two Swiss drivers for this lap explanation at Laguna Seca. So the semi-final was very, very thrilling, especially at the front with the top three. And things like this, as we have seen today, and as we have seen all along in the race home season, we would like to show you also in future starting late this year. Here is a little teaser. Stay tuned for more news on this new project and now it's time for the Super Final.
You can run, but you cannot hide. One lap shootout, super final. Mike Rockenfeller and Steve Gerber go head to head. Who will come out victorious in the final super final of the hashtag race home series? Steve Gerber from P1, Mike Rockenfeller from P2. Stand by, hold on to your hats. Let's go racing. So Steve Gerber, who has been absolutely superb, and Mike Rockenfeller, whose credentials are undoubted. Who will come out victorious in around about three kilometers time? The whole concept of uh, hashtag race home, Mike Rockenfeller, along with Thomas Vogt, responsible for it and designing this uh, fantastic uh, theatrical race series, which ends in this one lap super final. A real fight to the finish, which guarantees excitement and adrenaline. Man, I did the same mistake. <laughs> I went wide as well. Oh, Mike. But look at Steve, he's just so cool. And uh, he maintains this gap between himself and Mike Rockefeller. And if he can keep that comfort of margin as they run down the uh, corkscrew, <laughs> surely he will have done enough because... <sighs> There's but a few corners left now for Mike Rockefeller to make an inroad into Steve Gerber, and I don't think he's going to be able to do it. So Steve Gerber, though, runs wide. <laughs> good job, good job, good job. Really good. Thanks, Rocky. Congratulations, Steve. That was really good. Wonderful super final. Steve, how have you been driving without moving your steering wheel? The question I wanted to ask, but was too scared. <laughs> ah, the controller. <laughs> ah, very good. Wonderful one lap super final from you, Steve, uh, in a splendid and very exciting final against Mike. Congratulations. And uh, Mike is happy. He has now points enough to move up to second position. But now today you come and you beat them all. You beat the champion. You beat the runner-up, Mike Rockenfeller. You beat uh, Robin Freins, who is third in the championship. Must make you feel very, very happy. Yes, that's great. Thanks, Tom. Ich auf Deutsch gebessen. Okay. It's natürlich ein großer yeah. Vorteil, wenn uh, wenn wir zuvor ist zuvor starten kann. Ja, die Jungs, die schnellen Jungs mussten immer von hinten starten und daher konnte ich das Rennen gut kontrollieren. Und äh, ja. War, no, war, you are doing, uh, you, you're doing very well, uh, Steve. I mean, if I should translate, it's very difficult because it's not very German what you just said. It's kind of Switzerdeutz, but uh, you said you have a good start and you're controlling the pace. Uh, and making sure that uh, that you are staying in your position and you have done that very well. Uh, Mike had a launch at you at the corkscrew again and you were side by side, but both of you were very fair and uh, you won deservedly and uh, you seem to have a, a very good game on your hands. So congratulations on the final race Thanks at home so. winner, Steve Gerber. Congratulations, Steve, also from my side. Very, very impressive race today. You practice a lot, but this paid off today. Very, very good. So, Tom, this has been Race Home Season 1. You followed us, I think, starting with the second race when you came into our crew. Thank you a lot for joining us for all season. And how is your resume, Tom, after this race? I think it has become uh, very exciting. And now leading into the Super Final was again a fantastic event. And... Uh, I think it's a fantastic setup you have, and I think there's really something uh, for the future. You uh, engage a lot of people, and the mix of the professional racers, who some of them can improve. They know that in this type of virtual racing. And then you have it very well controlled by Frank Bieler, who knows not only the real racing, but also, also the virtual world, and what you have done in the um, RCCO um, over many years so in that sense it's a perfect mix and it's a lovely way to to spend uh, an uh, evening early in the week so maybe it has a future i'm pretty sure 
Thanks again, Tom, for being with us for Race Home, of course, for charity. You have been completely new to sim racing, while Frankie Boy is already yeah, into it for a couple of years. Frank, how have you seen this season? It has been, a, I think it has been a fantastic uh, season, uh, first season of Race Home. It was very, very interesting and exciting to watch. And um, especially, I have to say, the, the last round now at uh, Laguna Seca was really, really impressive. Uh, semi-final was, was really thrilling. Uh, the fight for um, positions was, was uh, tough and clean. Very, it looked very, very professional, really nice. And of course, the final was, was, was very, very interesting. Uh, so I really enjoyed it. And uh, I think uh, that is the future. Let, let's see how we can continue. I really enjoyed it. And uh, the only thing I can do, I have to congratulate Steve for the, for the race win and Nico for the championship. So everything has been going to Switzerland in the last two races, the victory today and the championship. Mike Rockefeller finishes as the runner-up. And for ending this season, we would like to hear the resume of our DTM riders. I say bye-bye. Hope to see you in the end of the year for our new project. Bye-bye. My personal highlight of the hashtag race home series uh, has definitely been becoming champion, that's for sure. But in addition to that, uh, I have two more uh, highlights that I would like to share with you. It's definitely racing against our fans. I think it's really, really cool to engage with that community and race against each other online. And uh, still the battle in Monza, I think, was, was mega with Robin and Loic. We had a really, really cool battle and I was really enjoying that very much. I think Race Home has been a really good uh, initiative from, uh, from all the people involved, you know, I mean, to, to be able to make something out of the situation. And this was super positive. I think uh, uh, also we had a lot of fans, you know, who wanted to be involved, uh, send, sending us uh, the design of their cars. Uh, so I think that the whole package was really, really interesting. It was really nice also to see all the other drivers uh, being involved and, and to race against each other every Monday. Uh, so that's, uh, that was pretty cool. So uh, I think, I mean, thumbs up to, to the guys who did that. Uh, it was nice to be, uh, uh, to be able to, to share that with, uh, with the guys, with all the people involved. It's just been good fun, um, especially through lockdown, just to keep in contact with everyone. Um, it's an honor being part of the Audi team and having been part of the Audi team for the last seven years and uh, so just to keep in touch with everyone and share a few jokes and a bit of friendly competition has, uh, has been really nice. It was really nice to race against the fans and I think we, we all had lots of fun all together. Uh, it was sometimes really close across the finish line uh, with, with Rocky and Fuji together with uh, a fan from, from France. I think if Rocky finished second only a few thousand behind so it was um, it was exciting to do. Um, so yeah, I think uh, everybody enjoyed it really well. Uh, personally, I I liked um, a lot what we what we did. Um, we learned a lot. We we saw where the difficulties are. I think when you see how we basically started this project, it was on a short notice, and we said, hey, let's do something fun, uh, create some good content, and hopefully collect some money. So. I think we, we learned, we had a good progress. Um, I think the, from, let's say, middle of the season, I think we showed good races. Uh, we were on time on the, on the streaming uh, stuff and uh, I'm sure the numbers on the, on the Audi uh, channels have been quite uh, surprisingly high. So uh, definitely there's potential and um, yeah, that's for me what I learned. The driving itself uh, was was good fun. Uh, like I said, I didn't take it too serious, so I didn't prepare myself enough, probably, compared to some of my teammates, especially Nico and, and Robin. They have been very strong, but um, yeah, I think I took it more as a as a fun event, and um, you know, we had some work in the background to do. So 